Good day, this is Frank with Oscillate Support Services, that is OSL8. You could find me and more information about my services, primarily IT but also media related, at our website osl8.life, that's oscillate.life. Today's video, as you can see here in the window, right in front of you, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about using Windows File Explorer or Windows Explorer. Specifically here what I have up is a Windows 7 machine and I'm just going to do the basic information about files, folders, and how to use Windows Explorer on Windows 7. I know this is the year 2019 and so fewer and fewer people are using Windows 7 but many people are still using it so it's still useful information and I will also at some point review using Windows Explorer or rather File Explorer on Windows 10 which is the newest version in 2019 of Windows. So let's get right to it shall we? So what I'm going to review first here I'll just go into the window here and I'm just gonna show you I'm gonna highlight here some things on the screen First of all, we have this section over here that I'm highlighting in yellow that is called the navigation pane over on the left side. And what we can do there with the navigation pane is we could come over here and we see we could highlight over the computer or these different sections here. I don't usually use favorites at the top. You can if you like, but that'll show what you use the most basically. So if you were to go to the downloads folder, that would show you what files you have in the downloads folder. Um, we got the desktop, got some shortcuts on the desktop for things. And then we go into another folder, we go to um, libraries here, it's another section. And it got documents, music, so on. But the most important part, at least to me, is the computer. So if you go to computer here, you see this computer has what looks like three different drives in it. Now, these might be f physical hard disk drives, as it notes here, or they might be one physical disk drive separated into three different sections or three different partitions, they're called. And so you could see here that this one has 71.8 gigabytes free and a total space available of 220 gigabytes, so that's the total size. So in other words, it's about, um, I don't know, two-thirds full. And then we have a HP Recovery, which is the D drive, D colon, and HP Tools, which is another drive. And those ones are less important. Usually the most important one is the C drive, which is usually where Windows and all your files will be stored. Windows is, of course, your operating system. And the rest of the files will usually be on the C drive unless you save them somewhere else on the computer. So if we click right in there, It'll open that right up and you'll see some more folders inside of there. And because this is a 64-bit Windows 7 computer, you have two program files folders here. So we got program files, those are two folders, and you'll notice everything that's a folder will say type file folder in this view that we're working in, which I'll go right into here in a minute. It'll have a little icon that looks like a little yellow folder standing up, a little manila folder. And so you could tell this is a 64-bit Windows 7 computer because the File Explorer here is of the style of Windows 7, for one. And then because it has two different folders, one program files and then one named program files x86. x86 is the old 32-bit standard. When I'm back in the 90s and up until mid to late 2000s up through 2010 or so 32-bit computing was the common thing and now in 2019 64-bit computing is more common so that's why there's two there um, so those are a couple of important folders that you might occasionally go into when you're looking for specific programs that are installed and that you use on the computer aside from those folders more importantly you'll probably more likely be using the users folder which is right down here and so the user, inside the users folder is where most of your personal information will be stored by default. So when you see up here in the libraries, you see documents, music, pictures, and videos. Those folders are actually stored inside of the users folder. So these are all folders, documents, music, pictures, and videos that are inside users. And then there's the Windows folder, which has all the Win Windows system files in it. And you'll rarely touch that 
rarely should you ever need to go in there. And this computer has some other folders for some other things, but we won't go into those. So let's go into the users folder, just take a quick look in there. So there's four folders inside there because we have four different users on this computer. <clears throat> And um, this Frank folder happens to be mine, of course, since I'm logged in as myself, I could go into there. But if you're not an administrative user, you can't go into these other folders. You can only go into your own folder. For instance, I actually am an administrative user on here, but that's a little bit beyond the scope here. Most people will have one account or maybe two on their computers, but there will be a folder inside here for each person that has like an account. And the folder name will be the same as the computer username. So before I go any further here onto folders, I want to review a few other things about Windows Explorer. We have over here in Windows Explorer on Windows 7 more options. So over on the right, if you click on that, we see that we have the details selected here. So that gives us a detailed listing of all the folders and files, if there are any files, in that particular folder that we're working in. But if we could change that to a list, and that changes it, takes makes it just a list without the details, which I don't like to use very often. Sometimes I like to use tiles, but not very often. It's also not very useful, unless you just want to see maybe some uh, set of pictures, and you want to see the pictures, it'll preview the pictures for you. You go to content, and that's also kind of a strange view. Um, then there's small icons, which again, I don't like too much. Medium icons large icons and extra large icons. So you could pick whatever you like depending on whatever you are looking at. I usually stick with details because then you have these columns here that you could sort by. So right now it's sorting by name. You see this little arrow up the top. So it's sorting alphabetically by name. And then if you click it again, it reverses that. So it goes in reverse alphabetical order. Then on date modified, there's the same idea. You could sort by date modified. So it goes from um, newest to oldest date modified, or you click it again and it goes from oldest to newest date modified. And of course you have a, a type column. You could do the same thing. There's, they're all folders, but it would sort based on the type. Um, and there's, there's these little arrows here. So you could choose specific types of fo folders. You could filter those out. And the same thing with date modified, you could choose a date range or you could narrow down what you're looking at in this folder based on that. And I apologize, you're probably going to hear some noise here from, from our cat because she's right here trying to get on my lap. But uh, anyway, that's a real quick rundown of that. You don't see a size listed here because folders don't really have a size, they just hold other files. But if these were files, you see a, a size there and then you could filter based on the size of files. So that's some real quick information there. And then you have a preview pane option here, which will give you a preview to a file. It'll show you some more details if you select a file over here. So I'll leave that open for now so you can see what that looks like. I'm gonna go into Frank, which is my folder here. And so there's even more folders in here. Like I said, these are all kind of made by default, all these ones with special icons. I'll make these a little bigger so you could see large icons we have games desktop downloads favorites links my documents these are all kind of created automatically in windows so in the my documents folder is where you usually will save word documents or word processor documents or powerpoint presentations or excel spreadsheets things like that you will save those generally into my documents that's why that folder is there and then to navigate, you could do a couple of things. Over here on the left, it's the navigation pane. You see these little arrows that exist in all next to all these folders. If you click on that, it will expand the folders to show what's inside that folder. So you'll see more folders inside of folders. And so right now, what we have light highlighted here is users because we're in the users folder. So we click that again, and it goes into Frank because we're in the Frank folder. We click that. We're in the My Documents folder, so that's highlighted. You could scroll down. You click on the left there, and nothing isn't highlighted in there because we're in the My Documents folder. Then you could also see it up right up here. If you click up here, it shows you C colon backslash users backslash Frank backslash documents. 
So that's the actual folder that we're in, even though it shows my documents down here. Windows is a little strange like that. It will show you my documents on the pane here, but the actual file path, that's what this is called. It's a pathway to where your files are or what you're seeing in this section here. Um, that is called the file path. And so each folder name is separated by a backslash, okay? So that's the file path. You're on the C drive, and then you're in the wind users folder inside the C drive, and then the Frank folder is inside the users folder, and then the documents folder is inside the Frank folder. So that's what we're looking at here right now. So I can navigate another way. There's these little arrows up here. So if I wanted to go click there, I could go into the downloads folder instead. And you'll notice also that it changed over here to downloads. And so now we're seeing all the files that are available inside my downloads folder. And if you click next to the little arrow next to downloads, it'll show you the folders there as well, which you could also see up here. There's a couple folders there. So there's also, could expand this across, drag it and make it bigger. So you could see the full file name. You could adjust those however you want. That's just a little bit of customization so that you could view the files that you, the way you want to view them. And again, here's the, the file type. So let's say I just wanted to see all the application files listed in here. I could go here and click here and then it filters it. So it's just all the application files. Then if I unclick that, it'll show everything again. Or let's say I want to see files of size. Let's see, it gives me a few options here. Huge files. So there are 16 to 128 megabytes. So that'll show me the big files. Um, or if I unclick that, it'll show me everything again. Or I want to see just the folders. Then I'll click there. So on and so forth. And again, you could see based on date modified, a long time ago, last week, or you could select the date range. I'm not going to go through all that. So there's a couple more options I would like to show you about File Explorer on Windows 7. You click over here on Organize, and you could go to Layout, and you could customize the Details pane, which is over, if you click that, that um, I'll hide the details plane. You might not have noticed where that is. Let's show it again. It's right down at the very bottom. That's the details plane. pane. Okay. And you go to layout and you could hide the preview pane. And that's over on the right side. And you could also hide that or show that here again. There's two ways to do that. And so then we'll go back and we'll we could hide the navigation pane. That's the one on the left side. So if you don't want to see that, you could hide that. I find it very useful though, so I always keep that enabled. I will usually leave that enabled, and sometimes I'll hide or show this depending on what the files are that I'm looking at. If there's a picture or something I want to see more details about, let's do an example here. So we click that, it says no preview available. I don't know that any of these files have a preview. Um, maybe we go into pictures and see if there's, there's no pictures there to look at. So it's not a very, I don't have a good example here for you of what you'll see in the preview pane, but sometimes that's helpful. So those are a few options there, but what I like to do more so is, actually there's, um, you can find more information about files. Let's go back into our downloads folder. You could click on it just once with your uh, left mouse and then right click and go down to properties and it will show you a lot more information. It'll say, show you the date the file was created, modified, um, the size, both the actual size and the size on the disk. It'll show you the location again right there. Um, and I'll show you the file name. And then you could go see other information here about permissions and so on. So there's a quick that, or you could go over here to organize and um, it changes on you based on what you have selected so because you're in here and you have one one f uh, file selected you go to organize and this menu changed a little bit it added a delete rename remove properties and properties so you could click properties again and it'll bring up that same window again 
And the thing about files is that you can delete them, but in Windows, when it actually when you press the delete, when you delete a file, you could either right click and delete it. Click there and it would delete it. Or you could go to organize. Well you have to have it selected first. Then you go to organize and delete. And usually it'll ask you, are you sure you want to delete? And actually it says, do you want to move it to the recycle bin? So the recycle bin is what it sounds like. Before you delete the file completely, it'll go into the recycle bin where you could recover it later if you want it back. So occasionally you have to go into the recycle bin and empty that out or the files you delete won't actually be deleted. So where's the recycle bin on Windows 7? The recycle bin is... And so there's another thing, there's uh, options you could run based on whatever you have selected. These are all programs or applications. But if you click on another one, it'll give you a default to open. Since this is a text document, it'll open a notepad. So there's some log information there. Based on whatever kind of file it is, different applications will open or different things will happen. So, anyway, I was talking about the the recycle bin. So where do we find the recycle bin? Well, it's over on the desktop actually, which I can't show you at the moment. Or I could try actually, I can do that. I just have to minimize that. And then I could move the recycle bin from the side of the screen over here. So there's the recycle bin. And so what does the recycle bin look like? You open it up and it does the same thing except now it says recycle bin right up here. And there's nothing in the recycle bin right now. But if I deleted something, there would be something in there. You don't see down at the bottom, but there's a little folder icon. And you could probably see, you could see recycle bin here. And then it's a little preview window. And then you could, if I hover over this way, you see the downloads. And I could click there. And so as an example, I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to delete the processor identification utility. Uh, I'm going to go delete, or you could press the delete button on the keyboard. It'll say, do you want to move it to the recycle bin? Yes. Okay. So then you notice it disappeared from here. So then we could go to the recycle bin. There it is. It's in the recycle bin. So if you want to re restore that, you could click on restore all items, or if you select it, it changes to restore this item. And so that will move it back. It'll delete, move from the recycle bin over to where it came from, right there. It's back in the users Frank downloads folder. But if I actually wanted to completely delete it, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that, you could do that two ways. Here's a little trick for you. You do delete and yes, and then go to the recycle bin and it's there and you'd empty the recycle bin and it will be gone more or less forever. There's still ways to recover it, but that's more complicated than even I really know how to do and beyond the text context of this video. So I won't go over that, but if you click empty, that will disappear completely and it'll be hard to get back. So I want to show you the other trick and that is to go over here and this is, you want to be really careful using this. But if you on the keyboard press the shift button and hold down, while you're holding down the shift button, you press the delete key, it'll say, are you sure you want to permanently delete this file? So what that means is that if you click yes, it doesn't go into the recycle bin. It deletes it completely. And I'll go ahead and do that. Yes. So it disappears from here. And then if we go to the recycle bin, it's not in the recycle bin either. So you just bypassed the recycle bin and completely deleted that file. So you don't want to use that very often unless you're sure you want to delete a file. Otherwise you will just want to move it into the recycle bin. So once again, just notice there's a difference between folders. They look like that and then files. And here the folders don't have a size and the files do. And then you could change the view around here. You can make small icons, big icons, so on and so forth, depending on what the files are and how you want to look at it. I usually stick with the details view 
because like I said, you could sort it by name, date modified, it's more useful to find files that you want to find. But there's also this little search box up here. So we're in the downloads folder, so if you want to search for a file based on the name or something, say there's a lot of files in there, then you could type that in there and it'll try to find it for you. And then again over here on the left, the navigation pane, you can navigate through your file directory a lot over on this side. But you might have noticed earlier when I first opened up this folder, I had to kind of dig my way through this tree. This is called a file tree. I had to dig my way through that file tree to get to where I actually was in here. And you could change that. So if you go to organize, you go to file and search options. You could have a few basic options here. I don't normally change those, but I do want to automatically expand to current folder. So in other words, what will happen there is I'll click OK. And then you don't see anything happen. But the next time I open this up and I go to downloads, see right here, it'll open, it'll expand to downloads. So I will show you that. I'll close that and I'll click on the file folder again. And now that's the recycle bin. I want to close that. So I'll open that up again. And um, make this bigger. If I click on downloads, it went to downloads right there. See it says Frank downloads. Didn't quite work the hope way I had hoped though. Um, I think, let's see, documents. Yeah, this is still a little tricky. It worked better though, so what it did do was it w opened up Frank, which is actually inside the C drive. If you click up here, you see the file path again. So it, it'll always show you the file path up here. And then again, you can navigate differently by using these little arrows here to go into different folders. So you could go into computer. If I click on C drive, it opens up C drive. You can see it right there. If I go into um, users, it expands it over on the left side. You see what it's doing? And I click on Frank and expanded that. See how that works? So now instead of me having to dig through as I'm going in through the folder system over here, it actually shows me where I'm at over here automatically. So that's very helpful, I think, for na navigating through the folders. And then um, if you want to organize some, th some files, say you don't want one of these files in the, like this text document, say you want that in my documents instead. You could move that very easily from there. You click and hold your left mouse button. You, so you just click it once and then you click and hold and then you drag it into my documents over here. It says move to my documents. So because it's on the same C drive, it'll move the file by default. So now we go in here and it's moved it. But if we want a copy here and we want a copy in downloads, we could right click on it, hold down the right mouse button, go over to downloads, and it says move, but when you release it, it'll give you the option, copy, move, create shortcut, or cancel. So let's make a copy. So there's still a copy here in the documents folder, my documents. And if we go to downloads, there's a copy there as well. There's one more thing I'd like to show you. If we go to folder and search options again, and we go to um, view, there's a whole list of things we could change here, but there's just a few things I would like, like to highlight. There's the hidden files and folders. Most of the time, you don't need to see hidden files and folders, but sometimes you might, so you might need to change that. So let's do that, and I'll know that there's any, I don't think there's any hidden files or folders in this folder, so you won't see any change. So I'll switch that back, click apply, 
but um, then there's a couple other ones. There's display the full path in the title bar, classic theme only. So I could click that and um, I guess maybe we're not in the classic theme because I didn't see anything change up here. That's all right. So we'll just turn that off again. So here's the more important ones. Hide empty drives in the computer folder. I don't want that one. I want to see even the empty drives. So I'll unclick that. And then I also would like to not hide extensions for known file types. So a file extension, you don't see them in this. Actually, you do see one of them, but I'll explain that in a moment. I'll unclick that and then I'll click apply and watch very closely what happens up here. And I click apply. Ready? You see that? They added a .log on that file and a .exe on these other files or a .msu on this file. So a file extension helps identify the type of file that a file is. So this type over here, the computer knows what the type of file it is based on this extension. So it has a dot and usually three or four letters after it, or sometimes letters and numbers. And that exe means it's an application. And an msu means it's a Microsoft update file. So I like to leave that unchecked that hide extensions for known file types that way I could always see what the extension is on the files rather than relying on this type over here and also on rare occasions maybe I want to change this from a .log file to a .txt file they're essentially the same thing but it might open up different applications um, based on the extension that's there so that might be a reason that you want to see all those file extensions. See this one up here that's a .spk, this dmods, so on and so forth, .spk, and it says spk file up here. That was unknown, so if I click on hide extensions again and click apply, that spk stays there again because it doesn't, Windows doesn't recognize what a spk file is. But I'm gonna undo that again and click apply and then there's some other options down at the bottom but I'm not gonna mess with any others so the biggest option on this screen is there's two of them there's the hide extension for known file types and the hide empty drives in the computer folder I generally don't want to hide those two things I want to see those and then there's um, hidden files and those are usually not shown but if you want to see them you could just come in here and show that as well and then you could also of course move files around just from fo one folder at the folder there like that and then you could go in and you can move it back if you want to you move it back into the downloads folder here or you can move it into the downloads folder actually up here I think maybe that doesn't work so if we move it downloads it goes back into the downloads folder all right so that's organizing files and usually what I recommend is you know if you have working on some kind of project for work or a personal project I down downloads is for files that I download off the internet it makes sense there's the documents or my documents folder if you're working on a specific project you could do right click new create a new folder give it a name test folder whatever you want it'll let you do spaces um, there's some things it won't let you use but it'll warn you and then you could um, open that up and save in there so if you want to save something here's another trick for you you want to remember what that folder path is you do a control C so you hold down the control key and then press the C key and release them both and that copies that that address or that path into the clipboard on the computer. And then um, if you wanna use that in another file, let's say I wanna create a text document, I could go to new text document, and I'll just leave it named new text document. And I'll open that up, and then I can do a control, hold down the control key, press V, and release both of the keys, and it pastes that file path in there. All right? 
But say I wanted to save this as another file, save as. This is pretty cool. And it already has me in the test folder. So that's cool because that's where this text document already was. But if I wasn't there, then I could highlight that and do a control V there and it would take me. Um, or you could use this, it could uh, hover over here and adjust this so you could see more on the left side. And just like you do in the file explorer, you could um, navigate to wherever you want to actually save the file. And um, then you put in a file name. And then if you want to change the type of file, notepad only lets you save in .txt. You click save and it saves it to wherever you're at here on the side and also more so actually up on the top. So let's say I want to save this as new text document two. You noticed there's now two text documents and they're actually almost the same. One of them's empty because I didn't save it. But if I click save, changes the file size. Maybe I need to refresh it first. Do a right click, refresh. Oh no, that's because I had saved it as that document. So this one's still blank. I have to reopen it. Control V, because it's still in the memory. File, save, and now it changed it. So the preview pane over here, since we have it turned on, it shows you the contents of that text document. Isn't that cool? Now if we go back to the downloads folder over here, we click a log, it won't show us the preview, even though it says it's a text document. But if I click on it and change this to a .txt, it gives me a warning because it might become unusable. Then it'll show me because that's how Windows works. If it's a .txt, it'll show you the text, but if it's a .log, it won't. See how that's interesting? Yes, I want to change it, and it, dis it disappears the preview. So, um, so that's how that works. Got file size in kilobytes. Um, I don't know if you could change. I don't think you could change what that's shown as. But 125,000 kilobytes is the same as 122 megabytes. Thank you for checking out today's video on using File Explorer in Windows 7. I hope you learned a lot, and in case you didn't, well, maybe it just takes a little bit of practice. You know, that's pretty much how I learn everything that I do. You just need to keep trying, play around with it, pick up one thing at a time. But I was hoping that this video can help you out, kind of speed things up a bit. And you can watch it over and over again, that's the great thing about a video. I also plan on making another video very similar to this one, except it will be on using File Explorer in Windows 10. So please keep an eye out for that. And in fact, you could actually maybe get a notification when that video is ready if you like and subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to give me any feedback, have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in YouTube. Or you can visit my website, oscillate.life, that is O-S-L-8 dot L-I-F-E, oscillate.life. And you could go to the contact page and send me a comment through the form on that page. All right, well, that'll t do it for today. I hope you have an awesome day. Enjoy life. That's what life is all about. Until next time, I'm Frank. See ya.